As a kid, I was very creative. But most of all, I was shameless, confidence personified. I would write and draw and believe wholeheartedly in every single thing I did. When I was in elementary school, I started writing a sci-fi novel starring me and my classmates as the main characters. And each new chapter I wrote, I would print it out and give it away during recess. If I were to do the same right now, it would be crazy, wouldn't it? But I was proud of myself, and I was being creative every single day. As teenage insecurity, or however, kicked in, the childlike pleasure of creating is scrutinized. We're told that art is only about fine arts, painting, sculpting, composing music, writing poems. But hey, all of those matter if and only if you're a genius of some sort. As if only gifted people could be artists, as if worthwhile art could only come from extraordinary, almost superhuman abilities. It's time we say that we're discouraging creators, telling them their work should be perfect in order to be praised. And it's time we believe that art only means creating tangible and aesthetically appealing works. We're losing so many chances to celebrate the more mundane forms of art that make life more colorful. Isn't it a pity to harness art into these preconceived frames? Well, this very scope should be to defy boundaries. Because this art, in the way a girl I know, writes down her dreams as soon as she wakes up. And what about that guy who can always find the most horrible puns for every situation? That's performing art. There's an artistic sensibility in being able to convey the whole spectrum of human emotions through a well thought out Spotify playlist and sheer talent, letting those people who can summarize eight seasons of their favorite web series in under two minutes and still manage to get you hooked. But none of those people recognize themselves as artists as these mundane forms of art go so often unnoticed, devalued, underestimated. I wanted this to change. Being a woman, aesthetic standards were already dictating so much of my life. I wanted my art to break free. But if I couldn't rely on aesthetic standards anymore to compare my works to, to be reassured of their value. I needed a new way to believe in what I did. So I did what I will always do in times of trouble, that is, I turned to the man of my life, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> what are you referring to is especially what Freddie sang in the last seconds of the song, It's a Hard Life by Queen. It goes, but I always live for tomorrow. I look back on myself and say, I did it for love. And to me, it just made sense that if we infuse love into every single thing we do, we will always be able to recognize a trace of that glimmering beauty. And so that means that if we pour just the right amount of passion into it, we can take even our most hideous drawing and smile. Let the ones I drew for this presentation. I mean, it's not the Mona Lisa, but I had so much fun drawing them, and they will always remind me of the excitement I felt while preparing this talk. That's how I started seeing value in spontaneity. No matter whether the result look professional, or conventionally beautiful, or especially well written, I simply allowed myself to enjoy the journey of self-discovery that led me from a blank page to one filled with words. Um, I realized that way that the stories I told best were the ones I enjoyed telling, the ones I told my friends. 
I realized that as I had to write an article about the demonstrations for the legalization of gay marriage in Italy, I took part to in 2016. So I took the train to Florence, went there, participated, had fun, took down notes, talked with people. And yet, when I came home, I was struck with a writer's block. When it was just about me and the word document, all the words just felt so dry and forced. So I decided to call a person I really loved. And I told him all I felt in that event, all the details I had close to my heart and that I would have loved for him to notice, too. By the time our conversation had ended, I realized how my article was there. In those minutes, I had been a much better storyteller. And I realized it was because when we were talking with people we trust completely, we really shred off that toxic need to impress others. All I truly wanted was for a loved one to be happy for what I lived, to understand what I felt and why, not to think of me as the greatest journalist on earth. I loved the way I wrote when I felt love. I felt that it had value, that it was nourished by the best feelings on earth, and that it spoke to me and it speak to other people with the same care I reserved for my dearest friends. Human connection became the thing that fueled my creativity, both as my source of strength and as my goal. And I could have that connection when I was being most sincere, when I was being most myself. I felt that finally I had found that one elusive metric I was so desperately needing to believe in my works. That is, how much fun I had creating them and how authentic and unapologetic I had been. In the end, it's imperfection, not aesthetic ideals that truly resonate with other people. I thought again about Freddie Mercury and how he wasn't afraid to pour all of his vulnerability into his songs. And how those songs reached me, a girl who didn't even, uh, <laughs> didn't even have the chance to be alive at the same time he did. Freddie was born Farouk Bulsara in 1946 in Zanzibar. He lived the experience of British colonialism. He was sent to a boarding school in India as a kid. He had to flee his hometown during the Zanzibar Revolution, coming to London having all of his possessions in a suitcase, before arising to global stardom. How much more different could his life be from an Italian girl born and raised in a small town in Tuscany? And yet, maybe we do share something. Maybe even just the fact that deep down inside, we're two romantic drama queens. And his voice and his lyrics were there to remind me that I wasn't alone in the mess that life is for people who feel things a little bit too deeply. A singer that sings his heart out and the listener who lives through each second of that song know each other fully in the span of four minutes. It's a beautiful form of connection, just ending time and space, how even strangers can understand and complete each other. And this connection is possible because, after all, we're all much more similar than what we believe. We all want the same things. We want to feel loved, appreciated. We like pleasure, we dislike pain. Most of us like chocolate. Even in our darkest and most secret aspects, there will always be someone that will recognize himself and feel glad he's not alone. By being sincere about our inner lives, we can offer the beacon of understanding to another human being. But still, these moments of connection are rare. 
Because spontaneity, authenticity are rare. Think about the last time you truly saw someone breaking down each and every personal wall in front of you. Sometimes it's just a fleeting moment. But we all crave this. We crave things that make us feel understood, that speak to us, that make us feel less lonely or at least less weird. We're just one truthful work of our way from feeling more connected to other people. And that's why I urge anyone to believe in their sincere work, in the little sketches they drew during lectures, in the songs they hum on the way home, because that is the most human, the most immediate form of art. And in its imperfection, it can connect us all. Don't believe in the voices telling you that those works will never amount to anything. I mean, I never made much money out of my music, and I still feel a bit of imposter syndrome when I introduce myself as a musician. Still, does that mean that all of my creative life was a waste of time? There's a little poem that has stuck with me about how our life will have a meaning, even if we're just positively changing the life of a single person. But I feel that we should be reminded more often that it's still a marvelous thing, the achievement of a lifetime even, the only person that will truly be changed by our creativity is ourselves. We can be changed by our creativity because it teaches us to believe in what we do and do more of what we love, eventually making our daily life more colorful. And shouldn't that be what creativity is all about? Living unapologetically is living creatively. And even just finding the perfect gift to make your best friend's heart melt is doing art, is creating something beautiful that wasn't there before. A smile. So we should embrace all the unconventional ways for being unknowing artists, because once we've learned to celebrate our most authentic kind of creativity, we can offer to the world the only gift that has never been seen before and never will after. Our uniqueness. Thank you.